Here in Newburgh, New York, down by the Hudson River waterfront, is where many prospering restaurants and businesses call home. It is also the home of creators, artists, and visionaries in the scenic art studio known as The Phoenix. They make your favorite Broadway shows and musicals come to life with their backdrops, working hours upon hours until the canvas is perfect. Creating a backdrop is no easy task. There are many steps to take until it can be shipped out to wherever it needs to go. Uh, from the beginning, there's usually a bid session where the designer will present uh, half-inch renderings of what the drops look like. And then if we get the show, then, you know, then we usually sit down with the project manager because we do, we do just painting. So we have to sit down with the people that are going to build the set, um, the people that are doing the teching of the set, you know, to make sure, because a lot of times there's tricks or there's things that have to be figured out, you know, that a designer will want to look that no one's ever done before, so we have to figure out how to do it. You have to know whether it's translucent or opaque. Uh, you have to, if it's a translucent drop, you want to starch it. If it's opaque, you want to prime it. Um, uh, grid it, draw drawing, either on paper or right on the drop. If it's on paper, it's then perforated and uh, as to pounce, which is a very, very old technique um, where your drawing is perforated with little holes and charcoal is forced through those holes and the finished drawing is then now on your canvas, but it's clean, all your mistakes have been made. And, and then we paint it. We have to flame-proof everything because, you know, New York has very strict flame-proofing codes. So, you know, we flame-proof here, we certify, um, Susan and I both are, certif are certified to, uh, to sign off on a drop saying it's flame proofed. Um, and we have the designer come and take last looks, see if there's any notes, um, and then it gets packed up. This sounds like a lot of work to do. Surely they're given enough time to get everything done, or so you'd think. Holy cow. Crazy. It can be off something. Brutally, brutally painful. In a word, insane. Uh, and it is something that has gotten worse over the years. I think, you know, the, the, the particularly with the economy being what it is, uh, we spend a lot more time haggling over money and producers want to hold on to the money longer. So you end up where, you know, 10 years ago you might have five weeks to build a show. Now you've got two and a half weeks to build the show. A couple of weeks ago we had 88 drops to do in about six weeks. So it's crazy hectic. You know, sometimes you can buy more time on a drop. You know, just like we, we say, what's your drop dead? Meaning, you know, what's the last day we can possibly get it into the theater? Broadway is getting tighter and tighter. We're usually doing a drop within two weeks. The computer has taken over. And uh, so nowadays they just, they don't even paint elevations for us to paint from. They just generate them on the computer and then they expect us to generate it as fast as a computer could generate it because now they can print out drops. And uh, so we're competing against computers, and when our boss puts a number of, of how many man days, he's fighting against how fast a computer can. And so he puts in lower, 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 lower numbers, and we have to just keep getting faster and faster and faster. And with all this pressure to move fast, something can always go wrong. You're not, you're not a real scenic artist until you've ruined a drop, quite frankly. We try to fix it. We try not to redo it, but we have had to redo drops. Um, you know, if it's just, uh, a lot of times, if the problem is a translucent drop, which means it's backlit, so like every portion of the drop is seen um, uh, under light, then it may be a problem we can't fix, which means we'd have to redo the drop. Because sometimes things happen, sure, and you have to go back, or sometimes information isn't conveyed um, in a way that is understandable to a person or so things can get lost in translation. I got food, footprint in, uh, in, a, in a cloud, on the sky, and the fence got it was next to the mountain. 
All right, in that case, I just put extra peak of the mountain on the side. But you're going to figure out, and we're in other ways, like, that's stressful. If, you've, if you're up against a hard deadline and something goes wrong and you've got to start over again, yeah, you've got to make that phone call and say, you're not going to get it when you, when you thought you were. Not only must they worry about time, there are always dangers in the workplace. We do a lot of work in dye, which is potentially toxic if you don't treat it right. Um, there's a lot of fumes. We had a catastrophic fire last January and lost everything. And so this is a fresh beginning for us, a fresh start. And uh, if nothing else, we have a sense of humor. It wiped out the whole company, <clears throat> everything. It wiped out the whole complex that we were actually working in. And um, so that day, uh, Joe called us all to tell us what had happened. We, were, we sat down and had a meeting that day. Uh, to decide what we needed to do to start the company up again. You know, it was like, because we had nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. The shop that we were at, which we called the mothership, uh, burnt down a year ago. And so we had to get back up and running right away because we had jobs. Um, so we just called it the Phoenix because the Phoenix is the bird that rises from the ashes of a fire. There was a drop for the New York City Ballet on the floor. It was a Sunday. The fire was on a Sunday, and the drop was due to go into the theater Monday morning. And, and you know, I had to call New York City Ballet Monday morning and say, no drop. I really was upset about old shop. It was quite home for all of us. Being a scenic artist can be a very difficult job with long hours, a tight schedule, and the pressure to be perfect. But every scenic artist has a reason that makes it all worthwhile. But it's done. Seriously, it's like, that's, done is good, that's it. I think the most exciting thing to me is, as I was saying, when, you know, you get to work with the designers and the tech team and you're, you know, pulling it all together, pulling all the pieces together. Um, for a show that's going to be on Broadway. It's just kind of, you know, it's kind of an exhilarating feeling. Uh, you know, besides just the fact that I love doing theater, I love working with people. I love the interaction with the designers. I'm blessed to be able to work with some of the most talented designers in the world, and every time I work with them, it, it's a learning experience for me. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, if there's any secret to my studio's success, it's the fact that I hire very well. Uh, and I hire some of the most talented scenic artists there are. And, you know, it's just a privilege to work with them. 